Listening to LA 40 with Katarina Kozias only on LA Talk Radio. All right, good morning, LA, and good morning, Los Angeles. Good morning, LA Talk Radio fans, and good morning, everyone streaming live on Facebook. I don't know if it's morning or afternoon or evening, right? That's right. I am here today with the lovely Mr. (laughs) Guy Ferdman. (laughs) <laughs> Guy, welcome to the program. I get the first lovely I've ever gotten. <laughs> Thank you so you're much. You're pretty lovely. Yeah, I'm happy you're, to you're, be you're here. lovely in your masculinity. Thank I you like so it. much. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so we are here with Guy today. Guy is uh, a friend. He is also someone that I have been looking to for um, probably about a year now mm-hmm. in terms of mentorship in the online space. I came across you through some friends of our friends, and we ended up at an event uh, about a year ago and have since been following each other and each other's work. And the work that Guy does together with his brother, Elon, is um, probably on the pinnacle of leading forward a movement that all of us are falling into, whether Mm. we realize it or not. Mm. So Guy, I'm gonna let you uh, edify yourself. Talk to (laughs) me a little bit about Satori Prime. Sure. Um, so Satori Prime, we are a uh, personal development company. I like to think of us also as a spiritual development company, emotional intelligence company. Um, and really what we provide is conversations and experiences that challenge the way people normally think, challenge the way people normally feel. And it's really all done with the air of helping people grow in ways that are really unexpected mm-hmm. to them. Um, at a rate and pace that maybe most people wouldn't expect that you can. Mm. Um, And while obviously a lot of the results our clients get are really results driven, the thing I'm most proud of is just um, like the self-care and self-love that they start feeling about themselves, Mm. how that reflects to the people in their lives. And usually it's like that self-care, that um, call it like ambient energy Mm. that we have within that we just kind of like carry. Everybody knows this, you wake up in the morning, you kind of feel you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, like how does that day go? It just kind of spirals out of control or you feel really great and then you suddenly have this beautiful momentum, things seem easy and flowy. Mm. What we're always looking for is how do we get people into that ease and flow type of state? Um, And then how does that start connecting the dots that life doesn't really have to be hard. Mm. It could be about this alignment, this ease and flow. And there are certain experiences that arise out of the courage to live that way. Huh. And I really mean courage because uh, eventually, and I'm sure we'll get into a yeah. bunch of that today, like the experiences that kind of naturally arise in the face of that and what we have to deal with, which is really our humanity. Um, so you <laughs> can't know, escape that. Yeah, you can't escape so, that. So one day I'll figure out how to talk about our company in two sentences and do my <laughs> elevator pitch. But, um, you know, really, we are uh, people who, who really have a big heart and care about the quality of life for people. And we started the company with the air of really wanting to create a transformative movement on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, And while certainly there are many people who've paved the way before us and we we honor and respect everything that they've done, we're seeing an opportunity to kind of start connecting, um, I want to say different spiritual and mental practices kind of together Mm -hmm. and bridging them in a way that brings practicality to personal development. Well, and the thing that I love about both of you is neither of you. So your brother is based in uh, New York. Sure. And mm-hmm. you're based on the West Coast here, San Diego-ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I love about both of you is neither of you came from um, a, a childhood that was really cemented in transformation and personal development. Yes. Um, you, you sort of taught yourselves, um, obviously probably mentored with other people, but, but it's interesting <laughs> yeah. because um, you, you, you're not coming necessarily from, a, you're coming from a world similar to mine, which was very corporate in nature yes. for a long time. Absolutely. Right. And so a lot of the work that I do with some of my clients is how do you bridge going from this corporate place where, again, you touched on it, society has somehow convinced us that it has to be hard, mm-hmm. that we have to struggle, that we have to d- strive and we have to sacrifice, and, and it really doesn't have to be like that. Sure. Well, let's just kind of look at that, right? So societally, what we have is, I, I don't think anybody would argue with a patriarchal society, and we see this in politics, we see this in the corporate structures. So. You know, that's yielded a a particular type of world, and it kind of like sets a foundation for how we get to show up, the conversations we get to have. And inside that world, one thing that we've edified for a really long time is resiliency. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and I'm not, I'm, I just wanna make clear that anything I present here is not like, I think this is more right than the way it's being done. It's just a different way of looking at things mm -hmm. and it provides different results. And I think, you know, we've all lived in this world long enough to see what kind of results we get when we operate this way. And I think one of the things that most of us would probably agree with that it, it, life seems to be a little bit on a hamster wheel. Mm. It's like you do, 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 and you kind of set yourself up to change your circumstances and it gives you this illusion that you have safety, mm -hmm. right? Like that you kind of have a sense of control and then something kind of comes along and like- Until the control is yeah, pulled out from under you exactly. again. Exactly, and you suddenly you know? realize like how fragile that system actually yeah, is when you you're go. scrambling, you know- Hello 2008. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, hello, hello. We'll, we'll see that again very soon, I'm sure, right? <laughs> and, and, and every time the lesson's a little bit like, well, can I surrender a little bit more? So something that we kind of look at is how do you start um, bringing forth a little bit more of that uh, feminine energy? So I want to just, just say like feminine doesn't mean you're a woman. Masculine doesn't mean you're a man. These are different energy types. Yeah, we're yeah. removing the gender. Um, yeah. Remove the, the physical gender. Absolutely. Um, because to your point, I'm, I'm a pretty feminine looking woman. Um, I have been living in my masculine at about the 90th percentile yeah. my entire life. And very successful doing it. And successful doing yeah. it, but doing it with a lot of grind and aggression and mm -hmm. drive. And, 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 and now that I'm allowing myself to soften into kind of more of the middle, right? Let's say masculine is here, feminine is here. Coming to meet in the middle, I'm finding that life is actually unfolding much more easily. Yes. Um, and I'm noticing for the men in my life, Mm. Um, be they colleagues or friends or what have you, a lot of them are kind of moving into um, m embracing a little bit more of their feminine, and that would be things like intuition, uh, allowing emotion, right? You would know better than yes. I. But I think the Actually, more I of us that can do that. Than, you would know better than I. Yeah. <laughs> but the more of us that can do that and kind of bring ourselves to a middle ground, mm -hmm. I think is going to be better for all of us. And Talk to me a little bit more about the masculine feminine energy. Totally. And I think we can even bring this into a scientific space. So if you're thinking this is just like spiritual, wow, mumbo jumbo, whatever, right? Yeah, it's a little bit woo woo when you look at it, but only woo woo because like, because it hasn't been embraced socially by everybody yet yet exactly but if you want to even break it down into you have a left brain and a right brain and there's different operational things that happen there so your left mm -hmm. brain is known as your masculine brain this is the doing analytical, the logic piece very right. analytical yeah. the right brain is the creative so when you mm -hmm. see um and in the body by the way it crisscrosses so whatever the right brain is doing that's the left side of the body oh. and the left brain is the right side of the body so you often find for instance, creative types are left-handed, left right? And you'll also see that like, oh, they're left-handed, they must be creative. It's kind of like an assumption you make mm -hmm. because it's what we found in society. Also, 90% of people tend to be right-handed and part of the reason is there's a patriarchal masculine energy on the planet. It's almost like we're forcing ourselves into the right side of the body. Mm. Uh, a balanced world would show up more like 50, 50%. Wow. Yeah, and there's actually old superstitions like my family's from Russia originally. I'm, I'm actually of Russian descent. I was born in Israel. And in Russia, when people were left-handed, they would actually tie their hands oh, yeah. behind their back and force them to learn to be right. Well, my grandmother was left-handed back mm -hmm. in Greece and back in the 30s, mm -hmm. and she had to learn to use the right hand. Exactly. And my mother was left-handed as well but she had the luxury of growing up in Canada in the 70s, so it was right. a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. She was allowed to be left-handed. A little bit more progressive. But, but yeah, yeah, no, it was the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the things that you might notice, right, is like people getting adrenal fatigued or constantly needing like substances, like whether it's medication or coffee <laughs> or... Xanax. Yeah, or any or, other... Or right. the other one. What's the other one that boosts you up? Um, Adderall. Right, right. Adderall. Like constantly <laughs> doing this because it's like your your body's in balance. You're you're exhausting your resources, so to speak. And it's because you're you're out of balance. I mean, mm -hmm. try, try thinking about about like walking when you're not feeling balanced, you know, whether you've been drunk or have vertigo or something like that, like moving forward and progressing is very difficult. So energistically in the body, it's the same thing. Like we are looking to start creating more balance in the world, but we've all been taught so much to rely on logic, to rely on these type of mechanisms that it, it is creating a lot of disbalance in the world. And if you kind of notice a relationship between men, men and women, like a woman will know, and I'm generalizing here, but a woman will know she's hungry, right? But she doesn't necessarily know where she wants to go or what food she wants to get. It's like, it's a kind of an abstract, mm -hmm. In her world, she kind of wants to flow and move and just like feel what feels good See right what now. See I feel like eating. Yeah. yeah, so it's like one second she wants that, the next second she wants that. And for a man, that's really difficult to figure out because they're just trying to fix. They want the logical. It's like, well, sweetheart, just tell me what you want. I'll find the place. We'll get there in the most efficient manner possible. Right. right? And that's, so that, that kind of like mm. battle, I don't want to actually use that word, but whatever, that's what's coming to mind, mm. is kind of happening inside of us. 
So it's like, you know, as a man, we've basically been taught to orient ourselves around two emotions, which is like anger and joy. <laughs> so if we're not, if we're not like joyful, then we're trying to figure, then we're angry about that we're not joyful. And if we're, and if we're joyful, we're kind of attached to it and trying to stay there. And, and we kind of miss out on this full spectrum. Of all of the emotion, yeah, right? Of like yeah. the more abstract. And I think something that people don't honor with the feminine is that the feminine is quite fierce. Like a masculine energy doesn't give birth. Like it doesn't even have the capacity to hold that energy, right? But like the woman's very fierce and there's like a fierceness to it. And I think a lot of men, they're just worried they're going to become effeminate if they start feeling. Mm -hmm. But what it allows for is like is a decrease in the fight. Because if we kind of if we kind of look at, you know, how society is set up where we're honoring resiliency, right? Like the troops come home, we clap. Mm -hmm. And I'm not dishonoring the troops. That's amazing what people are doing in that realm. But it's the same thing with sport athletes. Like, oh, they work through that pain. And yeah, we, we, we honor the pain. We mm -hmm. honor we honor that part. And if you look at that, and that's the energy, right? Like that ambient energy that you're carrying in your body, then you're looking for connection. You're looking for purpose. You're looking for alignment mm -hmm. through things to fight against in life. You'll actually subconsciously bring the experiences to fight against into your life. To keep feeling that sense of resiliency. Yeah, wow. like life is hard. You know, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. And if you go on the subway in New York, it's like a whose life is harder contest. Right, yeah. It's like every, <laughs> everyone's sitting there just like, huh. You don't know how hard I have it, man. That's kind of the energy people carry mm. in New York. But like the energy in the conversation in New York is if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Well, and, yeah. and, and what you get in New York is oh, I only slept four hours right. last night and, and that's celebrated. Yeah. And it's just the opposite. It's like, why are you not allowing yourself to physically rest, mentally rest, spiritually rest? Right. And, and if you did, how much more productive could you be? Exactly. Right. So I think that's part of <laughs> the evolution of moving forward as a society and that's really brilliant because right. like so that's the thing right this part of you these what what we're coming to ter terms with and calling like protectors mm -hmm. are like the efficient ones the ones that like to manage things right like the the thing that meddles every time something goes wrong the doer all these different things that are coming online what these parts of you don't see is that actually by releasing the control mm -hmm. this uh innate wisdom this like uh animalistic wisdom, this intuition, this greater intelligence can start coming through mm -hmm. and actually teach these mechanisms how to be better managers, how to be more efficient, how to get greater intelligence information. Like I'm, I've been building a business for eight years straight. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I got clear about is when I was working 16 hour days, yeah. six, <laughs> seven days a week, thinking that that was really productive. And I kind of went back and looked at those times in my life. I said, was I getting further ahead by doing more? Mm -hmm. And I legitimately could not find the mm -hmm. answer to that. Like, like I couldn't say yes to that answer. And I know the Gary V's of the world and people like that are, are preaching the hustle and do this and you should be making yourself wrong if you're not bleeding and, you know, doing all that. And I'm not, and I'm really not making them wrong because obviously, Obviously, that it's gets results. for them, yeah. right, it has. Obviously, yeah. right? We could look at a lot of places in society and say, well, working hard gets results. And the people that I know today, that when they tell me about the, the life that they're living, the things that are happening in their life that are honestly beyond logical comprehension, like the opportunities that come their way, the mm. type of people that are around them, the experiences that, that they get to have. Everything's magnetized, right? Totally. Yeah. The yeah. things that will blow your freaking mind because it sounds like out of science fiction are the ones that are doing the least. Th yeah, they're the ones that are investing the most mm. amount of time, self-care, self-love, right. realignment, reintegration, and it's almost like they get reconnected to the intelligence the, the field. Inspiration. Yeah, yes. and things start coming through them that are uh, that are legitimately unexplainable. So I just want to like just point to one quick event so you guys can kind of map this onto your life, yeah. because there you know there's different mechanisms of the brain, and it's almost like we've put so much energy into the frontal lobe mm. that it's like we're we're we've we've given up access to the rest. Yeah. yeah. So like so I've I've sat in silent meditation for ten days. Wow. Straight, it's this thing called Vipassana. It's free. Anyone could go do it. You go to dhamma.org and check it out. It'll radically alter your life. And something mm -hmm. you suddenly realize is that it's like your body's been in atrophy. It's like your brain and your body are like not connected <laughs> well. And um, if you think about all the pills that we're taking, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, no, no, go yeah. ahead. If, no, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you think about like all pills and medication that you're taking, what they're doing is they're, they're essentially blocking neuronal pathways in your brain so that your body is unaware of the pain that's in the body, but the body is still in pain. So when you look at all the side effects on TV, yeah. like why are you getting all these side effects? Because the body doesn't know that it's supposed to be healing itself right Well, now. and, and yeah. to your point about physical, like the physically in the body, right? I'm, I've noticed something mm -hmm. recently, and I want to touch on this, which is um, tuning into your body to hear what the message is trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, 
about a year ago, I was going through this, you know, kind of strange phase with my business and everything was changing. And, and I was feeling a lot of tension here, right? Kind of solar plexus yes. in the gut. And I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. And I was actually chatting with Marcy Locke and she was like, sweetheart, fear. that's fear. Mm -hmm. That's where your fear is being held. So why don't you mm -hmm. take a step back and actually try and ask yourself, what is it that my body is trying to tell me? Right. And the same thing, I suppose, when we're feeling tension in the shoulders or when we're feeling, yep. you know, so our body is trying to communicate with us. We just haven't been taught how to communicate with it. Absolutely. So right. in very simplistic terms, like this is the yeah. very young part of you. Uh, even now, I'm I'm uh, I'm not, but my my wife to be is eight and a half months pregnant. So we're like, we're thank you. So we're like learning a lot about child development, and mm -hmm. the child the the stomach is the first thing that's actually developed, and the brain actually comes out of the stomach. Wow. And science right now is is rever like saying that the our stomach is our second brain. I would actually say it's probably our first brain. Mm -hmm. And like if you think about like how do animals learn, right? They learn from their eating yeah. and smelling. And the, that gut and the instinct, system. right? That, ex that, exactly. That, that's why we call it yeah, that. Exactly. Somebody somebody knew something was yeah, beautiful so <laughs> you know? so we have all this language so the example I want to give you guys is if you think about Indonesia maybe like 10 years back when that typhoon hit mm. something that people often don't know is that while that a lot of people died when that happened mm -hmm. not a single animal died not one so why is this mm. and if you think about this when you become reliant on frontal lobe then the frontal lobe can only do anything with information it already has. It can reorganize it. It's like taking a, if, mm -hmm. like a, if you took a house that had bricks in it and you were to reorganize it and change it. Yeah, you can make a different house. You can do that with the brain and that's what it's great at, but it's not great at bringing in something new. Mm -hmm. Like, so like when we have sporadic, um, ideas like in science that bring forth like new right. like new information new technology like new breakthrough it is of a sporadic nature it seems to come from nowhere it's like it wasn't and then it just suddenly is mm. in people's experience how they describe it hmm. but the animals on the other hand don't use their frontal lobe they're very in tune with their bodies and that means that they're actually getting biofeedback from their environment and the mm. environment is actually telling them what to do if you've ever tried to sneak up on a cat you know this to be true because the cat always sees you coming and why does it know because there's a subtle vibration frequency that's that hitting the cat up, right? the cat feels it in its body it checks if something if it feels safe and if it doesn't feel safe it's on the move so the animals can feel the wave is coming pushing a lot of energy right. hey, we better get a yeah. little higher and they're like whoa this is a lot of energy we better move away from this energy and the humans are standing there literally at the shoreline seeing a 300 foot wave and they have no program for what you do when you see a 300 foot wave so they're just standing there looking at wow. it and the body's not getting any information so it's like we've cut ourselves neck down and the more you drug yourself you know different addictions not making it wrong just pointing out what's going on and we have this huge opiate problem right stuff like that you're 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 actually disseminating you're you're moving your connection from your body even further mm -hmm. and it's like if you've ever had something in atrophy like a charlie horse or a dead leg yeah. it's the same thing it's just you're just cutting yourself off and right. you have this whole other biomechanical feedback machine that can give you truth and, it, and, and this science is starting to show this, and it's like, it, it's really beautiful right now where we are. Well, I was gonna yeah. say, and especially for you to be, you know, soon to be a new, new parent, mm -hmm. um, being aware of where your child is at and how you can raise your child with respect to the environment that you're gonna be creating within your home. Yes. Which is also probably gonna be very different than the one you probably grew up in. Not that you grew up in a bad home, I don't know what you did or not, but mm -hmm. I'm sure your parents were not as educated in this realm as you and we happen to be, and your children will be even more so. Sure. Right? Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of the evolution. So like now when I look at my family, I see that I have the same programming as my grandfather, right. have the same programming as my father. Now my grandfather sits there and he's got really like no tools, no experience with like like this or even asking for needs like mm -hmm. that generation didn't ask yeah. for their needs to be met it was like survival that's good enough like make sure you eat make sure you like wash your yeah. armpits and like yeah. go out the door right and then it's like but our you know our parents generation a little bit more have moved beyond that maybe they've put some more work into kind of becoming aware but like my father's like you know going through a period right now too and maybe he's even watching who knows and he's kind of like stuck in trying to figure it out and trying to do and he's not as emotionally connected so that mechanism is failing him so what <laughs> advice would you give to someone yeah, yeah. and that's a, and a, that's a good point especially if they are a little bit older um, because we are so set in our ways yes how can one tap into more of the body what, mm -hmm. what are some tools you could give us well the first thing to just note is what is your system doing when you're in an alert state right so like Anytime there's a stimulus in your environment, whether you want it or not, that's creating anxiety, overwhelm, or stress inside your body, 
We, it's every day for everyone. Every day for everybody, <laughs> right? Because like our body biologically is actually built for acute stress. So like biologically, we're built for there's an animal, the animal's running after you, run. Do something. Right, yeah. you're like get out of here, save yourself, right? Yeah. And when that's over, what you'll see like animals in nature do this, they yeah. shake. Okay. And that's actually how they release Moving energy. energy. And wow. that's why they actually don't carry trauma the way humans do. We don't shake and our, and our brain like is susceptible to trauma mm -hmm. but so we're built for acute but when there's stress constantly our system actually has no mechanism for removing this until we actually take action to remove that so like so like moving and shaking and breathing are like different things that people can do but just to kind of like answer your question yeah. a little bit more um if we don't take time to sit quietly with ourselves mm. because people are very scared of alone time what, and what silence. What is that going to mean? Yeah, what am yeah. I going to, yeah. I'm going to actually have to spend time with myself? Yeah, what? and that's the thing, you know, like people <laughs> people make their lives very full, very busy. They say I have very busy, I have a very full schedule. And a lot of that is just, it's a really good avoidance tactic because if you're not with yourself, then the things that you don't want to look at don't tend to arise because they don't have space to. You're already full, right? And two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. When we quiet down, we create space. That's why like, you know, long-term meditation, stuff like that is so amazing. Um, you're basically sending a, a, a conscious signal to your subconscious that things that you've been holding down in your system are going to arise. Mm -hmm. This scares the shit out of people because the things that they've been trying to avoid since they were little children, like the early traumas. And by the way, if you're like, I've been traumatized. Yes. And welcome to the human race. Right. Like, you know, because because trauma, what we're learning is it doesn't have to be big. It can be very benign. Mm -hmm. And it's still the, the structure which trauma gets created. It doesn't matter whether it's big or small in relative perspective to that person, it's massive and has created, and it could just be like your parents didn't feed you on a Monday and that's that's very traumatic to you. Yeah, yeah. And, and thank you for saying that because you know a lot of people say, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, at least in the Western world, we're not dealing with you know hunger, we're not dealing with you know walking around with no shoes. Fair enough, we're not and we're lucky, sure. but we all, we can't discount the problems that we, that we do create for ourselves because sure. they're valid problems. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going back to how do you take the time to solve how do you take the time to dig under the surface? Yeah, so here's the thing. Most people are trying to uh, overcome, right? Because again, the story is resiliency, be brave. So they don't wanna go through it, they wanna overcome it. They wanna become so powerful that the thing ceases to exist. Like, mm -hmm. like now they have more power than that thing. And I think that's what the uh, empowerment movement has done for a long time because empowerment yields that you will become so aware, so conscious that you'll become more powerful than the thing that's been, um, you know, like hurting you or seems to be hurting you. In fact, it's just trying to give you information mm. and, and it wants what everything wants in this universe, which is care, mm. attention, uh -huh. unconditional love, right? Because like her stomach, this fear that's been there since she was a little girl and if we did some muscle testing we could probably figure out around what time that happened maybe the, the event that happened and that will give us some mental stimulation and that's cool it'll sound great at a dinner party <laughs> but like the the real truth is is that there is a felt sensation in the body mm -hmm. and now the 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 brain is adding meaning to the felt sensation in the body and it's fixated on it mm -hmm. and it and because the brain is doing it in the way that memories work you never remember anything quite the same way you remembered it like the original way yeah the original way and it oh, it's constantly changing because there's no way for you to actually remember how it was it gets fixated and it distorts the view and then your entire view of life becomes through that distortion so what this thing wants, right? Like it's like, imagine this is like a three-year-old version of yourself, this three-year-old trauma. And what it's basically saying when you feel a sensation is it's, it's asking for your attention. Mm. It's asking for your attention. And it's, it's like, and it's a passive observance, uh, a passive observant attention. It's not like a parent who's like scolding yeah, their right. child attention. Cause usually it's like, we see that thing where we're like, you need to not be that way. You need to change. <laughs> And what it really wants is your love. It wants your attention. So imagine mm -hmm. like a th your three-year-old girl or my three-year-old boy comes to you and is like, I'm really scared right now. I'm so sad. Like I'm really dealing with stuff. And you're like, get the fuck away from me. Yeah. You know, You'd you, never do that. Yeah. You would never do that to right. a child. Yet we're doing that to ourselves oh. every day. So what we haven't learned is how to mm. self-soothe because when we were children, our parents were the means of what soothed us, right? Mm. But if you look at a child, we were talking about shaking, yeah. they go into a temper tantrum. But we call that like it's bad, but what they're really doing is they're releasing the trauma that's in the body. That's wow. actually very healthy. That we then as adults turn around and say, stop doing that exactly. because kids don't cry. Yes. And then so we're cutting them off even from that young and, and giving them that illusion yep. that any sort of emotion is bad. Exactly. Boys don't cry, pull yourself together, you know, like gr that's not ladylike, right, like all those right. different things have been programmed into you to think. Mm. But those are just social programs. They're not your 
programs. You inherited those programs, and again, you show up a particular way. So then when you're in public and you're afraid, now you're, unf you're afraid, and you have shame on top of that that you're afraid. Right. Then you're guilty. Then that you've you're got afraid. a self-judgment. Right, then, then you're you've judging. <laughs> now again, fixated, distorted. Now you see the whole world from there, and you're trying to hold yourself together so that people don't see Here's the thing, though. Everybody's doing that. Mm. Something that something that's really good to notice is that yes, like you're afraid of everybody. Mm. Like people, like people <laughs> seem like they're threatening, but everyone's also afraid of you. Mm. And and that's the thing. It's like if we start getting really honest about what's happening in our system, then we can start caring for it. Because the moment that your relationship with your parents stopped that nurturing process, you like we most of us have not learned how to nurture ourselves. Right. And that in these little parts, notice they keep knocking. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, if that three-year-old came up to me now, the first thing I would do is bend down and say, "Sweetheart, you know what's wrong? What can I do? How can we fix this? What yes. do you need?" Yes. But to self, we say, I don't have time for this. Ignore it. Yes. Pop a Xanax, whatever we've been taught to do. Go right? through it. Or like go yeah. on with your day. Ah. And what I would ask of everyone who's listening is mm. uh, make self-care. Make yourself the top priority. And I don't mean that from an egotistical point of view because it's like there's that selfishness. It's all about me. And then there's like if I'm not taking care of myself, mm. right, if I'm not filling up my cup, then I have nothing to give anybody else. And if you guys, if everyone would just, you know, we all carry around this like burden of like, we got to save people, we got to help our family. We've got to look strong. We got to look strong. Just put, put everybody down for a moment. Mm. And just like, and I don't mean like put them down. I right. mean, just like take them off your shoulders. Mm. And, and your, your priority is here. If you're in alignment, because that's what ends up happening, you're out of alignment. This is why people's hips hurt, backs hurt, like all these different things, because the body physically will then reflect the energy that's out of alignment, huh. because it's kinesthetically reshaping your fascia, it's reshaping your organs, and energy is gonna keep moving in the body in a certain pattern. And this is what happens since we're little kids, we have trauma and the energy starts moving a certain way. Mm -hmm. It shapes our body. Like I can tell you with about 80 to 90% accuracy, just looking at someone's body, what yeah. their psychology is. Wow. Because- Whether they're hunched over, whether they're- Yeah, it's also like whether they have a pat, like a bigger body padded, whether they have a very lean body that doesn't look embodied, like all wow. different, there's all these different kind of clues that tell you because it just tells you how the energy in the body is moving, which mm -hmm. yields itself to what kind of psychology they're carrying. So it's like, again, I can kind of just walk into a room and be like, okay, I got it, got it, got it, got it, wow. got it. Got it, got it. And then I also know how to communicate with I that person. I was going to say, then yeah. you probably know how to approach them. Yeah. And how, and you probably can also anticipate how they'll react mm -hmm. to you. And what we call it is like you're going into pattern, right? So I mentioned before stress, anxiety, and all that stuff. So the body responds to that with things that you've made automated. So when you were a kid and you had some kind of trauma, you did something, per the perfect something, a mechanism came online and protected you. Mm -hmm. And it was a strategy in that moment. You're like, oh, this strategy works. That right. protects yeah. me, that, that saved me. But right. that strategy- The teacher stopped yelling or the, you know, the right. whatever. Oh, when I hide happen. in the back of the classroom and don't say anything, I'm safe, right? right? Or when I'm the center but of attention, I feel safe. But the thing is now, yeah. as an adult, that's all running in the subconscious. Absolutely. So how on earth can we access that? Right. I get, well, that's what you guys do. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> that's why you work with these guys. So that's kind of what we're alluding to but, here. But it's so, yeah. yeah. I'll point to it because if we go into the whole dynamics of it, it's gonna scare some of you guys or make you <laughs> frantic or think you're doing it wrong or whatever it might be. So it's just like, it's more pointing at it because look, the, the real healing that people are looking for is subconscious mm -hmm. because your life, we know this through epigenetics, you can look at Bruce Lipton's work and a lot of stuff like that, 95% of your life is an automation. Wow. Which so like you wow. have a, you have about five percent of your day where you're actually here. The rest of the day is just kind of <laughs> running on automation. And if that's the case, then it's like it doesn't matter how much mental exercise you do. And this is why people watch videos online to motivate themselves. They read all the books. They're doing all the things that seem like the right things, but they don't There's feel no different. Yeah. And notice how your life doesn't change when you don't feel different because you feel the same about your life. It's those mm. same things. So it's like how do we go back into that feeling? Well, something we want to and this is like the more practical, but maybe it'll give you an inquiry into it, is feelings come up, like sensations come up in the body. Now, we were talking about it before the show, like we build this life, we build businesses, we build all these things to protect ourselves from feeling that thing we felt that one time, we're like, I'm never gonna feel this again. <laughs> and when we start scratching the surface of that again, like something happens that creates a matter of unsafety or anxiety, those strategies that you created, they ran over and over again, mm -hmm. and they became automated patterns. Right. And now every time you feel that stress, that overwhelm, you literally fall back into, into automated patterns. And you and the thing is, it's subconscious, so you can't notice when you're in your own pattern. 
You're just running your freaking pattern. Yeah. But if you start paying attention to it, you're like, oh yeah, that is what I do. Mm -hmm. I get really angry or I get really sad or right? that's that might be your pattern, not better or worse than anybody so else. So how yeah. do you create that awareness yeah. to start to catch these patterns? So the first thing is, is just honestly inviting feeling back in. Now, mm -hmm. why do you want to do this? And, and this will probably relate to most people is the, I believe one of the biggest problems, if not the number one problem, if it's a problem at all on a planet Earth is self-worth. Huh. It's like we, we're all, we don't feel worthy of things. If you've ever, um, you know, we're kind of funny. It's like we do all these things to get people's attention. Yeah. Like whether it's the way that we dress or the businesses that we have, like we, you know, or we're like stars on stage or right, we right. stand back. Yeah, we're kind the of car like, we're buying, whatever. Right. Yeah. We, want, we want this like kind of attention. We want somebody to notice us, acknowledge us, and kind of just tell us that we're good. And then somebody will, like they'll compliment you. They'll tell you how beautiful you are, how lovely you are, right? Whatever it is. And then you kind of shrink. You're not like, oh yeah, right. that's what I've been looking for. You kind of shrink and you think to yourself something along the lines of, well, if you really knew who I was, you wouldn't be saying that. Mm. We devalue ourselves immediately. And this is what ends up happening. Like if you look at people who win the lottery, they oftentimes in like the 95th percentile or something will end up becoming poorer mm. than before they won the lottery. Like so, yeah. and the reason for that is all that money, their system doesn't feel worthy of that energy. So they start making terrible investments or they give their money away because they're anxious. And the best way to relieve the anxiety is by fulfilling on the thing that you're anxious about. Yeah. Yeah, fulfilling, and, and that's the thing. And, and actually, you, you sparked something, um, and sorry to interrupt sure, you, sure, but no. uh, Regan Hillier had, mm -hmm. had talked about something recently, and she was like, your self-worth is a direct reflection of your net worth. Yes. If you have no money right now, if you're struggling to pay your bills, if you're struggling, it's it's not necessarily because you're not working hard. Maybe you're getting up and you're you know yep. going to your job every day. There's a, there's an underlying self worth issue there mm -hmm. that is not allowing you to feel worthy enough to keep any of that, to build any exactly. of that, to receive any of that. Yeah. So yeah, for you I'm know for a lot of people, you know, I see they don't have a lot of money, so they work really hard. And what they don't see is they're like, well, I'm so afraid I don't have money. Okay, well, mm -hmm. if you start having a lot of money, the fear doesn't subside, it changes, right? Energy can't be destroyed, can't be created. Mm -hmm. So that, that fear energy is gonna move to a different type of energy, one that you're actually unfamiliar with. Which but, is gonna be even more fearful. Yeah, because now it's, like the, <laughs> now it's like the fear of loss. Now it's like you're not falling from five feet, you're falling from 50 right. feet. And they don't see that that's gonna put them right back into the same pattern mm -hmm. as not having money. So it's like, is doing the answer then, is more money the answer? Because look, you might wanna feel abundant, that's great but maybe your alignment and a feeling abundant has nothing to do with money at all. With cash, maybe it's right. just serving people. Maybe it's just being in your health. Maybe this lifetime for you is just about mm -hmm. being quiet and feeling relaxed and that would have you feel abundant, but everybody's so hyper-focused on money. It's gotta be wealth. It's yeah. gotta be tangible money, yeah. Look, life seems to just provide, whether you believe in God or you have some kind of faith or greater intelligence or the universe, whatever you wanna call it, it seems to provide. I ask this question of a lot of people and I say, hey, look, have you ever been in a situation where like shit was about to hit the fan and they're like, yeah, it feels like you were just hooked yourself off a cliff and, and you are plummeting. Where are you going? Yeah. And in that last moment, right before you smack down on earth because you have no choice but to surrender. Mm -hmm. And I imagine if you, you know, threw yourself off a building, there'd be like the initial fear. And then it's like, well, I'm gonna hit the ground. I might as well surrender. And when you hit that point of surrender, something magical happens. Mm -hmm. And it's like something comes and just like an opportunity, like hands came to take you. Yeah. And, and last week, um, or maybe two weeks ago now, two weekends ago now, I got to be an event called Chipsa. Okay. And Chipsa is a hospital that's in um, TJ in, um, right across the border here in Mexico, okay. in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. And they're essentially curing cancer through this, wow. th like 70%. Um, cure rate, right? yeah. Wow. Where, um, if you guys don't know this, like you know, chemo has about a four percent survival rate. It's it's very very low. So Chips have brought all these people together that have used this thing called the Gerson technique, um, which is really just drinking a lot of green juice and coffee enemas, wow. and people just cure themselves of like stage four, like really severe wow. cancers. And these were survivors that were there 30, 40 years, plus the medical community, wow. plus the naturopathic community, all oh, in one all space. pulled in together. Yeah. Oh wow. Beautiful event, and I got mm. to I was honored to uh, be on a panel there that spoke about the power of the mind. Mm. And what you hear time and time again is I was trying everything and then I surrendered. <laughs> I was trying everything and then I surrendered. And when they surrendered, something magical happened to their body. And that's kind of the, the, the same lessons I see in business and life. But we're not yeah. taught to surrender. We yeah. are taught just the opposite. Yes. 
don't ever surrender, right? Yes. Play with a bloody nose, play with a good, yeah. And yeah. so so that is a lot of, of having to unwind what, as you said, we said earlier, has been placed on us that we may not even realize, that may not even be ours. Yes. Right? Well, that's the, the kind of the point, right? When you yeah. don't pay attention to the system, you're literally dishonoring yourself. You're mm -hmm. creating dis-ease in the body because it goes the body goes from ease to dis-ease. And what, what we're, is required from, from us is just like an animal, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about like an animal that's faced trauma, it suddenly like gets its own space, it shakes out, it do, has this process it goes through to release the trauma. Mm -hmm. Humans don't have a process to release the trauma. We haven't been taught this. So going back to that like self-worth idea real quick, it's every time your system is generating a sensation and it's doing this a lot, Every time it generates a sensation and you don't pay attention to it, you're like, I don't have time for this now. Mm. What you're actually saying to yourself, to your subconscious is, I'm not worthy of this experience. And you keep doing that all day long. I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy of this, I'm not worthy of that. Then you go, I want a million dollars. And your system is tuned to, I'm not worthy. So when it, even, even if that energy would come close, your system would literally freak out, just like the people do who win the lottery, and it will shoot it back out. So it's like wow. even when great things happen in people's lives, they're like, wow, I can't believe that happened to me. <sighs> and what they're really saying is it's too good for me. Mm. Get it away from me. Mm. They don't go, oh, my God, I deserve that. That was freaking awesome. Give me more. <laughs> that's right. Right. So that's like that's like the mental aspect. But think, like feel into your system what happens when you're getting what you want and how you really are uncomfortable with it. So you you maneuver away. One of my yeah. really quick, one uh -huh. of my favorite case studies of all time. Is, is they take people and they give them like an electric shock, okay. and then they um, they tell them I know not, yeah, I, I, like, I don't, please, please don't, don't I don't, don't, do I don't that like with it me. because <laughs> of the shock, but I, I like I like what it says about people. Sure. They give them the shock and they sit them in the chair and they say we're going to progressively give you more shocks and they're going to keep getting stronger with the the strongest one being last. Now wow. we're, we are going to give you one choice, which is you can either do the progression or we can give you the strongest one first. Oh wow! What do people pick? And what do you think people pick? What would you pick? Uh, I would pick the strongest one first. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what people pick in overwhelming numbers. It's like 90th percentile. Okay. Why is this? Because the first shock creates anxiety in the system. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to alleviate the anxiety about what's coming, the quickest way to do that is to get the worst of it, right? Okay. So now, yeah. like, so now think about how this translates into our lives, into wow. relationships. You're in a relationship with somebody, or you're in business. Something creates anxiety in your system, like they're gonna leave me. Right. Because you have a program that maybe dad or mom left you at some point in time and you believe if you get too close to people, they'll they leave, leave, right? Yeah. Or so you so inevitably your subconscious has to see that program through because now the anxiety has started, which has pushed you back into programs. Oh, wow. And the program is they're gonna leave me. So they so, so what do they have to do? They, they may have as to well leave, leave. You. Yeah. So, so you, I don't have to go through the pain right. of, and the anticipation of them leaving. Exactly. So you're gonna wow. start setting them up through your energy and through your communication to take actions that will ultimately let you, that, that they will leave you. Then you'll go, ha, see, I was right about them. And people have this all the time. They get into the relationships and they're like, well, how is it, how is this guy the same as the last one? How is this girl the same as last one? But it's like, you're the common denominator. It's always about you. And part of this is like that non-acceptance of these feelings. So we avoid it by going like this, but this is what happens. The anxiety and worry you have, there's a big difference between anxiety i'm worried or anxiety and i care like you can care about something but the worry the anxiety mm. will inevitably you will push yourself into that outcome the one that you're trying to avoid that's because so that's crazy. where your frequency is and that's just how we kind of operate so mm. you keep asking me and i'm not really answering i'm kind of like again pointing at it is so what's what's the i don't want to say the answer but what's an opportunity is you're having a sensation learn to <laughs> observe it and I don't mean like learn to judge it. Like there it is, I gotta <laughs> change it. No, I mean like right. like if you were in a passive observant state, like imagine you're on a, a, on a park bench, uh, you know, with like kids running around the background, like big green lawn. Now you could be hyper-focused on some event that's happening in front of you and then your mind has opinions about it. Mm -hmm. Or you can just kind of like passively sit there and go into like your peripheral vision a little bit, let your eyes get almost a little bit blurry and just kind of like passively be in the space. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of passive observation I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, mm -hmm. which is just like watch your system from that passive observation and just see what happens when you let energy be there because ultimately when it gets your attention, and I'm not saying this to create an expectation like an outcome, what gener generally happens is as you focus on energy, the energy finally moves. So if you think about emotions, I like to call them energy and motion, mm. right? And when, and when you're not fulfilling on an emotion, what, what's happening is energy is not moving. Now, the body is a metabolic machine. If you okay. put food in, 
Yeah. It is going to metabolize the food and you're going to get energy. If energy goes into your system and we can prove your subtle body energy for a fact, it's there. When energy goes into the system and it doesn't move, it's just like food right. that would never come out of your body. Clogged. It, yeah, it's clogged. It's going to um, rot. It's going to turn into poison, right? And, and that's what's happening. So your your organs, your fascia is holding on to this energy, this pain that you have here in your hips, in your back. This is all just trapped emotion, so mm -hmm. to speak. But when you start focusing on it, it gets that care and love like a child who's just wants that soothing yeah, that, yeah. and it starts moving it starts it starts moving through the body this is how uh, we've had clients radically lose weight like like this like people who can't lose weight for like 30 years suddenly yeah. just drop 50 60 pounds money comes into their life like all these things happen and, and just, just to go, by allowing the energy to move absolutely so wow. we're, so to go back to chips so I'd like to even bring this to science level there's a guy there named dr. Bob don't remember his last name but he's talking about THC and, okay. and CBD and how it's helping like a, like really cure cancer. It's amazing. Wow. But he says what we're noticing is is that the that when the energy stops moving in the body, cancer shows up. When the energy starts moving again in the body, the body just heals itself. Wow. It's just what's so. But the energy can't move because we don't surrender. So the mm -hmm. the lack of surrender is like you know when you're you're holding on to something, it can't move. So it's like in your body, it's like that's what the responses are doing. It's holding on, it's gripping, and it's not letting the energy move. But when you relax and you watch, mm -hmm. you let go a little bit. The energy starts moving again. That piece just kind of starts healing itself. It's just our, our bodies just know how to heal themselves. Well, and you've got to think, you know, <coughs> taking it back 500 years when we didn't have mm -hmm. a drugstore on every corner, society and, and, and cultures managed to survive. And yes, there was survival of the fittest. And yes, people died a lot earlier, what have you. But we are built to get through these things yes. on our own. Yes. And, and we really have, have shut it down. Mm -hmm and have survived for hundreds of thousands of hundreds years, of thousands you know, of years, on those yeah. mechanisms. So I'm as guilty of this as anybody. We live in a quick fix world. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in an app world. We live in an it's Amazon Prime world, right? Not yeah. to promote Amazon <laughs> like they need the promotion anyway. Um, <clears throat> but there's no shortcuts in life. And when people get online and they work with a coach or the, whatever, what, they, what they're looking for is a shortcut. And in essence, a coach, it's like they'll do that for you because they're gonna point you back on the path. Mm -hmm. They're like, you're not on the path, get back on the path. Here's the path, here's <laughs> the path. And you wanna keep veering off because you're like, no, no, but there's a cool shiny little thing over there that I think will give me the quick fix. Here's the thing, it may, mm -hmm. but it won't resolve the issue that's mm -hmm. inside and it'll loop it'll back again back, right? and it'll show up differently. And when it doesn't get your attention with a little bit of energy, mm -hmm. it will get your attention with a lot of okay. energy. You know, And this is kind of what you see with people with cancer again, it's like, they're kind of just going through life, going through the motions. They're not particularly happy. And then cancer comes. And what cancer, to me, when I was there, what I saw is it makes people into a student again. Mm. And, and people often stop being students of life or students of anything. It doesn't really matter what you're a student of, but if you're a student, it means you're passionate about something. You want to learn. Mm. And something very special happens when you're in the process of mastery. Cancer seems to force people into a state of mastery because now you have to master your psychology master your body your health your wellness your yeah, diet your relationships your, yes, like every right. everything gets super magnified mm. and people if they take that opportunity start really transforming those areas of life and when there's alignment there again something really magical happens in the body is that true for everybody no is that does that mean that western medicine doesn't work for some people no it works for some people great and it's like if the psych if that mm. feeling doesn't change in the body, either the cancer will return or something else will come back again. Right. And you heard those stories of people who got cured and said, I didn't take that opportunity, and then this happened. Yeah. It was the next thing happened. Well, back to your point about self-worth and self-care. Um, I was chatting with one of my clients the other day and, and we were talking about exactly this. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, how can you add some self-care and some self-celebration back into your day. Like, what are five things mm. you can do this week? And she's like, well, you know, I don't want to be spending money. And I said, well, <laughs> no one said anything about spending money. But how about letting yourself sleep that extra half an hour in the morning? Yes. Right? We need that time sometimes, and we don't allow it. And society, again, and I don't mean to be bashing on society, but society is built in a way that if you're not at the office at 830, and you're there at 8.32, uh, you're uh, reprimanded, uh, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. What if you need a half an hour that morning? Right. And if you took that half an hour, you'd come in so much more productive mm -hmm. and so much happier, and you'd have so much more creativity. So, so again, I think it's up to us to become, start to become aware of this mm -hmm. and, and pull um, a, uh, a devotion to our own, um, I don't want to say happiness, but it really kind of comes down to that, mm -hmm. right? Joseph Campbell, follow your bliss. What is going to make you happy? 
I want to throw a little bit of wrench at that. Yeah. Because okay. again, I think like oh, interesting. What, yeah, what people, bring it. And I'm not saying this, I'm not saying that's wrong. Again, I'm mm -hmm. I'm just saying like, hey, let's look at something a little bit different. We're we're obsessed with feeling better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Constantly trying to get us feeling mm. better, but when we don't feel good, then we feel like oh, something I'm must be wrong. I got to fix it, mm. and then all those systems come back online again. So you're trapping yourself by chasing the feeling, right? So you might say that our job is not to feel better because when you can experience fear mm. or sadness the way that you experience joy mm. with like that acceptance, that excitement, oh my God, life is just showing me something. There's an opportunity here. Something magical happens. So one might say that our job is not to start feeling better, it's to get better at feeling. And, mm. and when we take that opportunity, you start reintegrating every piece of yourself. Cause it's like, we keep hearing this conversation. We're all one wholeness, be complete, blah, blah, blah. But then people are like, well, I'll be complete, but I don't want fear in my life. I don't want anger in my life. I'll be complete without those things. It's like, guess what? That's baked into the system. That's not going anywhere. Right. So it's so like, you may as well embrace yeah, it. You're either going to be in the fight with it, or you're going to learn mm. to surrender when it's there and appreciate that it, oh my God, okay, this is arising to show me something. I'm getting perfect feedback from my environment. I can feel it in my body. There's a communication happening. Let me be with it. And then something magical will happen when you are what it may look like i'm just again want to point at it because i don't want to create expectations is that what people call coincidence i haven't believed in coincidence in a long time mm. i believe in synchronicity mm. so what i find is is that synchronistic events that most people would chalk up to coincidence they come with greater frequency it's like you start moving mm. it towards you like the relationships that you're looking for you don't have to even look for them they end up finding you the business opportunities that you're looking for they find you mm. it all comes like intuitive action it's aligned wise natural action versus the doer mm. through control through scarcity thinking that it knows better than the greater intelligence that put together this entire universe it's like would you rather rely on this you right. know little thing between our left and right brain, uh, left and right ear, and it's an amazing tool. Again, know what it's for, and then, or would you rather connect with an intelligent force that we can now measure, that is scientifically proven, and let that information come through your system and start having these moments of sporadic insight? And it's really interesting that yeah. you say that because I've been trying to really shift, again, me personally, 90% doing and the 10% feeling. Yes. And what I've come to recognize as a formula is it's actually 10% action, 40% mm -hmm. vibration and frequency, mm -hmm. and 50% surrender. If you can just surrender into whatever is happening in your experience, and then vibe in a way that is gonna make you, you know, be okay with whatever it is, be it grief, be it excitement, yeah. then you only need 10% effort to actually have something change. Yes and we're not fighting and battling and, and judging. So true. Yeah. Like, you know, do a quick exercise, right? Because money money in this time in society uh, equals safety, right? We're not farming, we don't get food, like we outsource everything. So it's like, <laughs> so money's the only way to get the things that we outsource, at least in the Western world. But like, do an exercise, like sit there, close your eyes, mm -hmm. and put yourself in front of your computer screen or wherever it is that you check out your bank account information and put more money in the bank. Just put more money in the bank. Just start being like, okay, well, uh, I got five, five grand in there now. That doesn't feel good. All right, let me put 10 grand in there. Okay, let's see if that changes anything. Nope, okay, 100,000, million, <laughs> 5 million. Notice if you actually feel safer when there's more money in the bank. And if you don't, then most people like it's like they they know what they don't they know what they don't want they're very clear about that but they have no idea what they want there's no clarity on what do i actually want so it's like i say you want confidence you want health you want safety that's pretty much it you get those three things you're going to feel fantastic your life is going to alter in a very very profound way here's the thing though notice right like just like you can go back to traumatic memory and feel that pain feel that experience you can also visualize or experience what it might be like to live the most perfect life that you can possibly imagine. So like imagine, not that the 10 million is there, but the feeling that you wanna feel, yeah. that you think you're gonna feel when it's there because you won't feel that way when you get there. But <laughs> here's the thing, because like I, I've made that kind of money and you don't feel different. You, you Like you know when you're like a kid and you're like, well when I grow up I'll, I'll be a grown up and I'll feel like a grown up. I'm 35 years old. I when feel, we feel like grown yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. I feel no more like a grown up now than I did when I was five years old. Like I'm still that kid who's like, what the hell is going on, right? So. Um, you know, I put money in the bank, but again, the feeling, but notice how you could generate that feeling in your body. You could just be like, okay, well, what would that feel like? Oh, it would feel like and this. And you could do that with love, right? If you're looking for a relationship. Totally. Instead of saying, you know, why isn't it here? When's it coming? When's she coming? Yeah. It's like, what, how do you want to be feeling? Yes. 
and 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 feel that and that will allow it to become a reality it'll certainly move it closer capacity, to, it seems right? to certainly move it closer to you okay. and if that sounds really woo woo to you like <laughs> cool that's awesome and, and you're allowed to have but an opinion can, about you know that what? try it how's exactly. that right I, I always tell my students run the experiment mm. when you're driving in the car and something says make a right turn don't don't avoid that. Make the right turn, see what happens. If you wake up in the morning and you suddenly think of somebody that you haven't thought up in quite some time, you're like, oh, that's weird. And it feels like they're sad. Call them, find out, start eliciting ways for you to grab evidence that there's something way bigger than what your mind is Can creating. I share a cool yeah, story please. on this note with yeah. you? Uh, so about a year ago, I was out jogging in the morning mm -hmm. and the leaves were changing. And I, I sat, uh, jogged by this tree a hundred times. One morning I noticed that it was this beautiful fiery red, mm. beautiful. And I wanted to pull my phone out to take a picture and my phone had no battery. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, wow, you know, like the one day I want to take a picture of something. And so I just sat there and I kind of revered the tree. Um, I just kind of was in its presence and I thought, wow, you know, really cool. Three hours later, I'm in the car, driving to a meeting in Beverly Hills and something says to me, turn right. Uh, three streets earlier than I'd normally turn, okay? So here I am, okay, okay. so I turn right the entire street mm. lined on both sides with these trees. Mm. Like just the universe saying, here you go, darling. Like, yeah. you know, just what do you want? What do you need? It's here for you. And that was <laughs> really a, a nice, this might've been about two years ago, but it was a nice reminder for me to begin to remember the wisdom that is around yes. and to start to allow it. Yeah. We are out of time. Okay. We need to allow this conversation to end, which is unfortunate because it's such a good one. Um, thank you so much for your wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, for sharing all of this with us. There's so much to explore. As you guys can see, this guy knows his stuff. He's a master at it. And, and really, they are delving into, he and his brother um, with Satori Prime, are delving into um, really pushing forward a new paradigm of how we can operate, irrespective of gender, irrespective of socioeconomic class, um, that can really just help us enjoy this life experience, right? Or mm -hmm. at least feel it. Beautiful. Yeah. How do me. people find you? Uh, I'd recommend just going to uh, satoriprime.com backslash collective. Mm. Uh, oh, yes. Talk to me about the collective. Yeah. This is good. So this is a, a community that we've put together that really kind of gives people access to these kind of conversations mm -hmm. uh, a few times a month. That way you can kind of interact with me and my brother and, yeah. and really just start exploring these ideas. So whether you just like again, like have a feeling in your body, like this is really interesting. You know, I'm kind of interested. I don't quite understand what they're talking about mm -hmm. because it's a new language. It takes time to kind of like let it melt into your system and for you to just start noticing that you actually intuitively know all these things already. Mm -hmm. We're just pointing at things that happen in your system so that you're more guided towards your really your own guidance system. And there's really no, you know, truth that's the truth for everybody it just kind of everyone everyone gets to explore their own we're just kind of like sherpas that show you kind of where to look um so yeah that's uh that's really what it's about that's like the easiest way to start getting part of these conversations and uh we good also conversations yeah and we also have a podcast called the uh, personal development without the fluff podcast that's on itunes and spotify and stitcher and all those things yeah that i always will listen to when i can they're so generous it's always online it's always free it's always great information it's always great guests yeah. um who was a guest of yours that you had on oh what's his name Mm, the little Canadian guy, the blonde guy. Little Canadian blonde guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not that little. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of blonde Canadians, so we're going to have to leave it at that um, for now. Yeah. No, Durant something. Uh, Sonny, Sonny, Sonny Durant. Yeah. Okay, so I had caught uh, an episode with you and Sonny, I yes. think, about six months ago. And um, <laughs> he, real quick, guys, because we do, we are going to be out of time here in just a couple minutes. Um, he, had, he had suggested a really cool exercise. I'm going I'm to pass this along uh, if I remember it correctly. He said, script your life like you were just thinking of how you expect it to be how you'd like it to be how you want to experience mm. it to be three months out mm. okay three months from now what do you want to have and and i kind of thought you know what i may as well do this little exercise i poured a glass of wine and i thought let me scribble away tonight and uh this was january and for may i was doing it for you know and april may and i listed i want to be living here i want to be you know mm. seeing this much kind of come in income wise and i want to be feeling this relationship wise and I forgot about it. And right. then when I was moving and I was packing up everything and I found this journal and I'm going through the journal and I see this from January, it was now June, mm -hmm. four out of the five things that I had written down that I wanted to have an experience and see in my reality, bloody showed up. Mm -hmm. So 
You can absolutely script your life. You can Agreed. absolutely co-create with the divine. Uh, it's simply a matter of taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And if we can unwind from 17 hours of football or 17 hours of <laughs> Kardashians <laughs> or, you know, leave the kids for half an hour and take a bath, uh, I think we'll all be better for it. That's right. So I mean, what would happen yeah. if you re rejiggered your time and invested a little bit in that, that self-care? And I've, I've had that experience many, many, many times. Right. Um, so yeah, absolutely yeah. reaffirm well, we, that. We uh, appreciate your experience with us today. Thank you for tuning in with me. Thank you for being here for Guy Ferdman, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye, guys. All right, take care. Oh, I gotta figure out how to stop us. <laughs>